Thank you so much to Travis from New Mexico for allowing me to use your deck on the channel. It really means a lot that people from the Magic community would share their creations with me and the world. The name of the game with Rem Carlos is Damage. Reject the damage dealt to us and deal extra damage to opponents. Doesn't seem like much at first, but let me tell you, it was brutal to play against. Damage. Since the deck is all about damage, may as well start with the good stuff. Breath of Derigaz and Flame Break. Deal a set amount of damage to each creature and each player. Breath of Derigaz lets you do 1 damage to all non-flyers, but if it was kicked, you deal 4 damage instead. In the case of Flame Break, it deals 3 damage to all non-flyers and they can't be regenerated. Fault Line, Earthquake, and Molten Disaster. Deals X damage to each non-flying creature and each player. Molten Disaster is the best here because it has a negligible kicker cost that gives your spell split second. Basically meaning it's uncounterable. GG for those non-flying peons. Subterranean Tremors. This is the same thing as before, but now it destroys all artifacts and or makes an 8-8 lizard depending on how much you paid. Rolling Earthquake. This is the same, but instead of non-flyers, it's non-horsemanship creatures and each player. And since there are only 36 creatures in the entire game that have horsemanship, you can almost certainly guarantee that all those creatures will die. Chain Reaction, this is a cool one. The more creatures on the battlefield, the more damage this does. It keeps those token decks at bay, you know? Acidic Soil and Price of Progress, both of these deal damage equal to an amount of lands players control. Acidic Soil equal to all lands they control, and Price of Progress for twice the number of non-basics they control. Aurelia's Fury. This is such a versatile spell, dealing X damage divided how you choose, plus you tap creatures that are dealt damage this way, plus it stops our opponents from casting non-creature spells as long as they're dealt damage. This is just such a strong card and I just can't get enough of it. Blasphemous Act, the tried and true, 13 damage to all creatures, so good. I don't think I've ever cast this spell for more than three mana either, honestly. Extra damage. I want to now deal even more damage to everyone. Now let's take a look at all the cards that can help with that. Blackblade Reforged. Blackblade is always a fun one. In this deck it helps buff our important creatures by giving them plus one plus one for each land we control. And in this case that could be our commander or any of these creatures coming up. For example, Torbran Thane of Redfell. It helps us deal an extra two damage for every red source of damage we control. So if this deals a bunch of damage with Blackblade, it deals an extra two every time and that's for every red source we control. Repercussion. Do you want to make players die fast? Well, look no further. Whenever any creature is dealt damage, it'll deal that much damage to its controller. Yikes. That extra two damage from Torbran and our commander will also get added to that, keep in mind. And if you want to deal damage to creatures, take a look at Brash Taunter. This guy makes for a bad time. Indestructible and it deals its own damage right back at target opponent. Uh, Enrage doesn't get much better than this. And Brash Taunter also has an activated ability that allows it to fight another creature, immediately dealing that much damage to an opponent. All this extra damage builds up quick, and the extra damage won't go to waste due to our next card, Torolf, God of Fury. This is probably my least favorite god in all of Magic because he's so good and just obnoxious to play against, but oh my heck, he's so good. Any excess damage that we deal is dealt directly to any target. So if our Brash Taunter fights and deals extra damage to a creature with its fight ability, any other target we choose will take that much damage. Remember Blasphemous Act from earlier? Yeah, all that extra damage is super lethal with enough creatures out. I've died to it, it's no fun for opponents, but it's an incredible win for us. It has a backside as well as some sort of hammer. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever even seen this card. It's never gets played, <laughs> so we're just gonna move on. Damage prevention. Now you may think to yourself, Travis, why did you add in so many things that deal damage to our own creatures? Well, never fear, here are the answers for that. Mark of Asylum, The Wanderer, and Tajik Legion's Edge. Now, these three all do the same thing with some added bonuses, but I'm not going to go over those right now. The most important thing on these cards is that they prevent all non-combat damage to us and or our creatures we control. This is so good in the deck. Most of the sources we have that deal massive damage deal that damage to us and our creatures as well. So, being able to prevent that damage is crucial. 
Light of Sanction. This one is similar to the last three, but it specifically prevents damage dealt to our creatures by sources we control, meaning our blasphemous acts, our earthquakes and such, they won't have any effect on our creatures. And lastly for this section, Deflecting Palm. It allows us to deflect oncoming damage and redirect it to something else. It's super useful for attacking creatures or other damage decks or the like. So you can never go wrong with a Deflecting Palm in your deck. It's literally always useful. Protection. With damage prevention must also come some added protection for just wonky situations. Stuff like Bastion Protector, giving Ram Carlos is a nice buff and indestructible is perfect. Having that one extra damage out all the time might not seem like much, but having two or three sources of that one extra damage every turn really adds up. Plus he protects us from damage spells as well. So having Bastion Protector save our commander is, is just great. Blacksmith Skill. This is a great card to have come out of Modern Horizons. Hexproof and indestructible for a turn ain't bad, and it gives us the freedom to deal damage to everything else while keeping our specific creatures, probably our commander, safe. Not to mention it gives a combat damage bonus to artifact creatures as well. Eh, not as important in this deck, but really good nonetheless. God's Willing and Sejiri Shelter. Both of these give our creatures protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. I personally think this is better than indestructible in a lot of ways, just avoiding some sort of damage or removal from any source, really. God's Willing scries this one as well, and Sejiri Shelter also acts as a land if needed. Life gain? Life gain in a burn deck? I think yes. There are only two things in here that do that, and probably in the whole game, but it's a fun thing to point out. Fire Song and Sunspeaker plus Radiant Scroll Wielder. These both give our instants and sorceries we control lifelink. Fire Song and Sunspeaker only do red spells, but hey, most of the spells in the deck are red anyway. They also make any white life gain we control deal damage as well, so it sort of has a nice symbiosis with damage and life gain all in one card. I love it, and I'm so glad it got reprinted recently. As for Radiant Scroll Wielder, it helps us also reuse our spells from our graveyard. Cast a mass damage spell, and then on the next upkeep get it back, and use it again. Just beautiful, and I'm looking back at that Toral from before. Recoupment. Speaking of recouping spells, let's get some back with these two highly efficient spell slinger creatures. Backdraft Hellkite. This helps us cast our instance of sorceries again for the turn that it attacks. Flashback is really strong, and doing this potentially every turn Backdraft Hellkite is out is incredible, as long as it can attack. Charmbreaker Devils. No one seems to play these guys, which is a mistake. It's just a great card. Just get back an instant or sorcery from your yard to your hand on your upkeep. Just cast those big spells over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but that was, that's, that's where my mind went. Boros Goodies. These cards have similar themes to what we've already seen with damage, spells, and life gain, but it all kind of is jumbled together, so I just put them into their own Boros section. Sunforger. This grants a nice combat buff, but let's be honest, it's going to be used for its activated ability. All our instants in the deck are less than four mana, so we'll be able to grab one of them. What a cool way to tutor in red and white. I think we should get another card like this. Boros Charm. No Boros deck would be complete without a Boros Charm, am I right? It's got damage, it's got protection, it's even got more damage via Double Strike. This is a card everyone playing red and white always hopes to draw. It's the perfect card for these kinds of decks, giving you just what you want at any given moment. Deafening Clarion. Dealing 3 damage to all creatures and or giving our creatures lifelink is useful no matter who you talk to. This is an amazing card when it was in standard and I think it's just as wonderful in commander. Rip Apart. You'd be surprised how often this card comes in handy. Enchantment removal, especially in red, is great. Plus it can deal damage to a pesky creature or planeswalker if you need. Not many spells do planeswalker specifically, so that's a really nice touch. Search for Glory. This one's just a tutor spell, and it's going to be used to find one of our legends or a saga. If you choose to use Snowlands in the deck, you also gain life off of this as well, eh, but just kind of an added little thing there. Removal. Tons of damage to creatures and players is great, but what happens if we need something more niche? Uh, that's what this section's about. Soul Guide Lantern. This should go in every deck, I swear. A one cost, beefed up Bajuka Bog in any color, that's just too good. And if it doesn't tickle your fancy at the time, you can also draw a card off of it. A Braid. This is basically another rip apart, but it can only deal damage to creatures and it can only destroy an artifact. 
It doesn't seem as good at first, but it helps with mana fixing a bit better, being one in a red instead of white red. So you can play it in just red or basically any other red combo. Wear and tear. Fuse cards are cool. I'd like to see them more in the future. You can cast both sides if you pay the mana cost for both sides. This is just an artifact and or enchantment remover and for cheap too, three mana max. Chaos Warp, remove something from the board and hopefully not get something worse after they shuffle their library or you get the same thing back. That has happened to me before and it can happen to you too. Generous Gift, permanent destruction and that permanence controller makes a nice little elephant. You know what I'm saying? Source to plowshares, you exile a creature, easy peasy like. Dismantling wave, and there's nothing a little board wipe can't fix, right? It can remove specific things from opponent's boards, but if there's too much going on, just cycle this bad boy and destroy all the artifacts and enchantments instead. Card advantage, staying ahead is key as I always say, so here are some great ways to do that in red and white. Faithless Looting is one of the best card draw spells in the whole game, and it even has flashback. Draw two and discard two all for one red mana, exactly what red wants to do. Secret Rendezvous and your temple is under attack. White does things in a different way than red, and it almost always helps an opponent out whenever you draw a card with a spell. These both give us two or three cards while an opponent does the same, and your temple is under attack also has another mode protecting all our creatures as well if we need that instead. Mask of Memory. Boros decks usually have some sort of equipment, and Mask of Memories is always great, allowing for card draw upon combat damage to a player. Light up the stage. If an opponent lost life this turn, and with this deck, you basically are guaranteed that you'll do that, uh, we will only have to pay one red mana for the spell. It gives us two cards off impulse draw that we can play until the end of our next turn. I just, I just love this card. Showdown of the Scalds. The first mode is what counts most in this section, giving us four cards of impulse draw until our next turn. And then the next couple of turns buff a creature after every spell we cast. Pretty flippin' awesome if you, if you ask me. March of Reckless Joy. The March cycle from Neon Dynasty is really cool. It has an ability that lets you exile red cards in your hand to pay for an extra two in its mana cost. Then when you have your X amount, you can look amongst those cards and cast up to two of them until your next turn. Lots of choices and it's potentially only one red mana for a huge amount of impulse draw that you can just kind of rummage through. It's a really cool new card ramp. Now this deck does have ramp, but every deck has ramp in it, so I decided to make a playlist with all the ramp spells. It's a list of videos that helps you find what you're looking for when it comes up to any sort of ramp you'd like. So you can look for the red and white videos in the playlist right here in this card. I will however mention the two most important ramp pieces in this deck, which are... Stormkiln Artist and Neheb the Eternal. So Stormkiln Artist has just, there's a ton of instances of sorceries in this deck, so making a treasure for each of them is so strong. Always having extra mana is a must here. And Neheb the Eternal, gaining red mana for each one life our opponents lose on each of our turns is just, just, just incredible. And Rem Karlus is always guaranteed an extra red. This is the perfect ramp spell in this deck. I, I think it's like, if you build this deck, you gotta put it in there. Now, thank you so much again, Travis, for letting us preview your deck. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for your weekly dose of magic. To support this channel, visit the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. And if you want to support the channel directly, visit patreon.com slash Manfred plus magic. As a patron, you'll have access to the community discord where you can talk with myself and other friends about all things magic. And you'll find even more benefits for each tier, starting at $1 as a copper.